Harry's wife. A question of control. You know from my work that the narcissist seeks four things when it comes to an involvement with other people. For the unaware narcissist, this is done subconsciously. For the aware narcissist, this is done in full knowledge. All appliances, i.e. people, must be controlled, kept under control or brought under control. Fuel must be obtained. Character traits must be obtained. Residual benefits must be obtained. Control and fuel are the most important aspects. The narcissist is hypervigilant to threats to control as a consequence of the way the narcissist has been created. Fuel is the lifeblood of the narcissist. It glues the construct together, enabling that construct then to aid the narcissist with the pursuit of the prime aims. Control is fundamental to the existence of the narcissist. You can threaten it in two ways. You can do so by wounding, where essentially you do something without the provision of fuel, ignoring the narcissist, not replying to a text message, not answering the phone, walking away from the narcissist, forgetting the narcissist's birthday, not inviting the narcissist to an event. All of those are things that wound. Or you can do it through the provision of challenge fuel, which is where you issue a challenge but provide fuel at the same time. So, for instance, you say to the narcissist, I really hate you. You're a useless human being. Harry's wife cannot stand to have her control threatened. She doesn't realise that is what is going on because she's an unaware narcissist. But that is why she dabbles in so much, micromanages, interferes, bosses Harry around to the extent that she does. And anybody that threatens her sense of control must be dealt with. This is why, for example, she often dresses poorly. She will undoubtedly have had advisors, stylists have told her what to wear, but she believes that she knows better. And anybody suggesting to her that she should dress in a particular way threatens her sense of control. It has to be Harry's wife's way, or it's the highway for you. You must do what she requires. You must undertake what she desires of you. What you suggest to her, even if you're an expert and it's well-intentioned and it's actually designed to enhance her position, will not go down well. Because you ought to know what she needs and requires and you shouldn't be suggesting something that suggests to her that she doesn't know what she's talking about. This is why many narcissists believe they are experts in so many things when they are not. They believe that they know everything there is to know about wind farms or give me the, give me the wheel, I know how to drive this boat. They take over, interfere, inject themselves into situations as a consequence of a lack of boundary recognition, a sense of entitlement, but moreover, that unending need for control which exists moment to moment to moment. And there's an interesting article in The Telegraph that focuses on this question of control by Victoria Ward, which tells us, BBC would never have approved the Harry and Harry's Wife show. Unlike Netflix, Corporation could not relinquish editorial control to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, documentary boss says. The BBC would never have broadcast the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's Netflix series as it would have meant giving up control, its documentary boss has suggested. Claire Sillery, who is responsible for commissioning documentary content at the corporation, said the BBC's audience expected it to maintain certain editorial standards. Asked in an interview with Deadline, the entertainment website, whether the BBC would have commissioned celebrity-led documentary series such as the Sussex's six-part series Harry and Harry's Wife, she indicated that it would not, adding that a public broadcaster cannot relinquish editorial control. Part of that, I should imagine, is also politely saying we wouldn't get, want to get involved in such a shit show. The fact is that they also recognise Harry's wife's absolute need for control, which would clash against the BBC's own protocol of ensuring that it has editorial control for the purposes of credibility. Ms Sillery acknowledged 
that in the online world, people can have complete control of their own narratives, which of course, as you all know, suits Harry's wife. She often talks about her narrative, which is a driver from her narcissism. But Miss Sillery also said that documentary commissioning was a question of trust and what audiences expect from us. She added, but the question for the viewer is what you are paying your license fee for. The viewer expects us to maintain the editorial standards that we have. Harry and Harry's wife was broadcast in December and covered the couple's relationship from their early courtship through to their decision to step back from their roles as working members of the royal family. It was broadly viewed as an attempt to seize back control of their own narrative. As the Duchess said directly to the camera, doesn't it make more sense to hear our story from us? Remember, of course, when this is being told by a narcissist, it's the narcissist's perspective that comes to the fore. It's how she sees the world, not a necessarily representative of what actually occurred, but how she sees it. That is all done because she needs, in telling her story, to have that control. She also needs to use it to nullify threats to control that have been posed by the behaviour of other people. The couple were interviewed extensively, sharing private family anecdotes and video footage. It was produced by their own Archwell Productions company as part of their reputed £100 million deal with Netflix. The documentary was variously described in UK publications as a very Californian exercise in grievance, a tedious narcissistic wallow and a one-sided PR effort. However, its director, Liz Garbus, has strongly defended the series, suggesting that the negative reviews jarred with the overwhelming public interest in the couple. People are very happy to read everything about Harry and Harry's wife when it's somebody else writing about them, she said in January. But when Harry and Harry's wife want to tell the story in their own words, it suddenly becomes an issue. People are not forced to watch a documentary. It's not going to be required in school. It is your choice what you binge and what you don't binge. Naturally, what Liz Garbus fails to appreciate is that people have an issue with what Harry and Harry's wife have to say because it's a lie. Much of what they say isn't accurate, and instead it is what they want to say in order for Harry's wife, of course, to seek out the prime aims. What are some of the observations about this below the line? Well, Stanislaw Bielki, people don't like listening to people tell their own story because in many cases the narrative is presented in a way that tries to favour support from the listeners and is often perceived at best selective and at worst fictitious, which is a fair summary of the way that Harry's wife would present matters. Bettina Thwaite carries on a similar vein. It doesn't make more sense to hear their story from them because we know from experience it's not objective, merely a series of imaginary grievances. Mike Jones, hmm, who lies more, the BBC or Harry and Harry's wife? That's a tough one to debate. Joe Green comments, documentary commissioning probably also requires it to be an actual documentary, a factual report. Alex Hawthorne, that's odd you think that a load of dubious truths, downright lies, narcissistic psycho babble and leftist drivel, all covered in cloying honeycoated self-regard would be right at the BBC street as that comprises a great deal of its output now. Patricia Lepresto, these two again, Spotify just cancelled her. They won't get their whole payout for lack of production. Hope Netflix does the same. I can't imagine Harry's Invictus documentary being a number number one hit either. Bettina Thwaite responds, there's rumours swirling around the Invictus documentary as well. Some say it's on the point of being cancelled, either through a lack of quality material or because it's the Harry and Harry's wife show all over again. More on that in due course. Thus it demonstrates how people have seen through their behaviours in recognising that when they talk about their story, people realise that it isn't actually anything objective at all and is a further tissue of lies and the revisions of history that Harry's wife is so 
apt to engage in as part of her narcissism. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.